So you've come so far here to get to this point where we've created our data, we've done some analysis, and now the part comes where we go to make a map. So I think you're probably wondering what that means considering you think you've probably got a map in front of you. And well, I guess that's where the terminology is a little bit confusing because yes, this is a map view, but a full map has other features that help us interpret it. So things like a scale bar, a legend, a north arrow, a title, and some information about who created that map itself. So let's go ahead and have a look about how we're going to create that map as a full communication piece now that we've done the hard work that we want to get out there. Now, one of the things that I probably should have been doing as I've been going along, but haven't been, is to tidy up what I've got in my table of contents a little bit. So if we have a look over on this left-hand side, there's a number of different things that are in there which I no longer need. And if I tidy those things up, it's less likely that I'll get confused about different layers. So first of all, I can remove the roads layer. So if I right click on that and I'm going to remove it. Now this doesn't delete it. I can still always bring it back into my project at any time that I like. I remember where I've stored my data. It's in the GEO database. All it's doing when I go to remove something is take it out of this particular project. All right, so if I now go ahead and save my work as it is, that's saving it that that feature class no longer exists in the project that I'm working in. Now there's some other bits and pieces that I no longer need as well. So I can actually select multiple pieces at a time and remove those together as well because that's going to be just a little bit quicker. So I'm going to select these these four feature classes which I no longer need because I've continued to work after that. So there we go, I've just tidied up my table of contents considerably now. The map view looks no different because I didn't have any of those features turned on anyway, but I know that my, my workspace is just a little bit tidier. Now, on to creating that map itself. So if we go to the Insert tab, we're going to go to a new layout. So if we click on that and it just asks us what size we'd like to work with and the orientation as well. So this is important. Do we want a portrait orientation? So where it's up and down the page as opposed to a landscape, which it's long ways. Now this is going to depend on what it is that you're creating the map of. So if I have a look at my JCU campus here, it's, it's sort of a little bit more long ways as opposed to up and down. So I'm going to create the A4 landscape map here. So I'm going to click on that one and this is going to start creating my new layout. And basically all that is is just a blank slate and it's up to me now to bring in all those different features that are going to help me communicate the information that I've just created. So the first bit that I want to add in is my map frame. So if I click on this and it's going to give me a good idea of what it is that I want to put in there. So I'm just going to pop that one in there and draw out a space where I'm going to place that particular map view. Now bear in mind you can always change this. Now this is one of the things that I find a little bit funky when we're working within the layout view because there's two areas where we may want to zoom in. So if we come over now to the layout tab, we get to some different tools that we can use to navigate around. So first of all, let's have a look at these navigational tools. So this first button here is just, again, it's just going to switch you into that navigational mode. And this is useful when we want to navigate around what I'm going to call our, our slate or our canvas as a whole. So if we're going to select that navigate tool, we can zoom in and zoom out and you can see that the entire canvas is moving in and out. But what if, for example, we want to show that in our map view, we want to zoom just to this area that we've digitized. We can do that as well. So there's two ways that we can do that. If you come over under this layout tab as well, you'll see that we've also got some map navigational tools. So we can zoom in and out using these tools here. And that's going to allow us to zoom, zoom in and out by, by predetermined fractions, which might be enough for you. If it's not, and you, you would like to pan around, for example, you need to click on the activate 
button here. And what that's going to do is allow you to work within your, your map frame here. So just using the normal navigational tools within the map frame as opposed to within the canvas as a whole. So we can click on that explore button and this time as we, we, we can zoom in using the mouse in and out and you see the difference to what I showed before. This is all about just moving the map itself within that map frame rather than moving the canvas as a whole. And so the idea is just to work with the data that you've got to make it look just as you would like it to, to be able to communicate what it is that you're trying to output. Now, once you've positioned your, your digitization and your map exactly where you'd like it to be and you've finished zooming and panning around, if you go back to the layout tab, you can now go to close activation. And this time, if we go to the navigate button here, again, that's going to take us back to navigating around the entire canvas as a whole. So I do recommend having a bit of a play with that because it's something that can get a little bit confusing as to which zooming and panning tool you're using and which part you're zooming and panning in and out of. Now the other features that we would like to add into our map, we can find all under the insert tab. So we can add a north arrow simply by selecting on that and you'll find a range of different north arrows that you can use and it's purely up to you which one you'd like. So select the one that you want, draw out a box and that will pop it in there. And you can change its size or position or do whatever you like to that as well. We're gonna add a scale bar in there and again, so many different options, both with metric and imperial, up to you, your choice, how you want that to look. I'm just going to pick that first one there and, and draw out a nice long scale bar down the bottom here. Now we can go in and change the properties of each of these elements that we're adding at any stage as well. Now we might wanna add a legend so people know what the different colors are that we're using within the feature class that's identified there. So let's click on the legend there and same as all of the others, we're going to draw out a box and we're gonna place it somewhere. Now this one you might need to play with a little bit, particularly if it's overlapping part of your image. So you'll be able to see that it's, it's a little untidy and that it's a bit hard to see the name of my legend here, although I can see my individual features. And it may be that you need to work with editing that particular item and changing font sizes and all sorts of bits and pieces like that. Now it's really quite easy to do this if you need to edit any of the features in your map you just right click on it and go to properties and you'll see here that you've got a range of different options that you can that you can change as well now one of the cool things to notice when you're using the the legend tool for example is that it's dynamically linked to the features that you have displayed within your map so what that means is that you can see at the moment i've got all these different features displayed on my map view if I was to go over to the map tab over here and come back to my original picture that I've been digitizing. Now, if I ticked off that, for example, and I come just back to the satellite data by itself, and now I move back to my layout, you'll see that that's disappeared and the legend information has disappeared as well because it's all dynamically linked. And that means if there's nothing in the map, then it doesn't appear in the legend either. So we can go back and turn that on and again if you wanted to add any additional layers you can do so and you see that appears back in your legend in your in your legend and on your map view as well now other types of things that you might want to do is to include some text so that's quite important to include a, a title for for your map and also information around the the person who created it and the date that it was created as well. So if you want to do this, you can just add in the using the text button here. So we're going to draw out a box and I'm going to say map of JCU Cairns campus, for example. All right. And then again, you have the option of changing the font size, style, etc. Once you go into the properties by right clicking on it. 
Now in terms of creating the map, it really is all up to you as to how that is going to look to make sure that your map is balanced, you've got colors that make sense, so you don't have trees in blue, for example, because people think that blue means water. So you're following some general cartographic rules to make your map easy to interpret. You do want to make sure you have each of these essential map elements on it so you've got information about what your map is showing. You've got a legend, a north arrow, a scale bar, and you've got an author on there as well. And beyond that, it really is an art to make your map look great. One of the things that I can recommend is to having a look on Google and Google Images in particular for different types of maps and see if you can pick out different ideas as to maps that you like versus maps that you don't like so much and what you can do to make yours mimic something that you do quite enjoy looking at and is easy to interpret as well. But I do recommend having a bit of a play through some of these options up here and, and see what else you can do to make your map look just that much better.